Welcome friends to our evening broadcast of Sri Aurobindo Sadi Trivyar in Canto 7, The Descent into Night, in Book 2, The Book of the Travel of the Worlds. They are between verses 330 through 335. This no man's land he passed without debate. Him the heights mission, him the abbeys desired. None stood across his way, no voice forbid. For swift and easy is the downward path, and now towards the night was turned his face. A greater darkness waited, a worse rain. If worse can be, where all is evil's extreme. Yet to the cloaked, the uncloaked is naked worst. They are God and truth, and the supernal light had never been, or else had power no more. As when one slips in a deep moment's trance, over mind's border into another world, he crossed the boundary whose tail they trace. I could not see but only the soul feel. Into an armored fierce domain he came, and saw himself wandering like a lost soul, amid rhymed walls and savage slums of night. Around him crowded gray and squalid huts, neighboring proud palaces of perverted power, Inhuman cowardice and demoniac wards, a pride in evil hugged its wretchedness, a misery haunting splendor pressed those fell, dun suburbs of the cities of dream life. Their life displayed to the spectator's soul. The shadow depths of a string miracle, a strong and fallen goddess without hope, obscured, deformed by some dire gorgon spell, as might a harlot empress in a bulk, nude, unashamed, exulting she uprised, her evil face of perilous beauty and charm, and drawing panic to a shuddering kiss, twixt the magnificence of a fatal breast, allured to the air abyss the spirits fall. Across his field of sight she multiplied, as on a scenic firm or moving plight, the implacable splendor of a nightmare pomps on the dark black ground of a soulless world she stays between a lurid light and shade her dramas of the sorrow of the depths written on the agonized nerves of living things epics of horror and grim majesty Rise statues spat and stiffened in life's mud, a glut of hideous forms and hideous deeds, paralyzed pity in the hardened breast. In boots of sin, a night repass of vice, styled in femmes of the body's concupiscence, and sordid imaginations etched in flesh, turn lust into a decorative art, abusing nature's gift, her pervert skill, immortalized the sown grain of living death, in a mud goblet poured the backache wine, 
to a satire gaze that pierces of a god. Impure, sadistic, with grimacing mouths, grave foul inventions, gruesome and macabre, came television from the gulfs of night. 